Uh, Brian Phillips with you. The land got hit by a storm last night. It's not our land yet still, which is kind of weird because it's not really our problem yet, but it kind of is because it's going to be our problem soon. So we came out here with the intentions of clearing a path to the waterfall, that little waterfall we showed you, but we just wanted to show you what happened last night. These trees are some big trees. Here's one that's fallen. I took a weed whacker just to clear a path right here. Yeah, that took about 15 minutes there, but we lost, I, I wouldn't say we've lost the trees yet, but some of them have been uprooted or pulled over a little bit. And look at this little dinky waterfall that we had. That's the amount of rain we got. We got 10 inches of rain. Good Lord, that was a monster. It was a monster mosquito. So now we've got this to deal with. And uh, the erosion that we weren't sure was gonna be an issue has actually created quite the cool little passage <laughs> here. Um, which, I mean, honestly, I still really think it's awesome. But the thing is, when we build this house, we're gonna be digging out a bunch of dirt. And so my expectation is we're gonna to have to take some of that dirt and bring it down here and reinforce to make sure there's here. somewhere for the water to go and not erode this wall away. Yep. Um, because like, for instance, look at this tree here, guys. That tree right there, see how it's tipped away from us? It That's because be it's probably it's up, up here. here. <laughs> yeah, it's like- It was up here yesterday. It's up here. So, oh, somebody asked a question about berries. Yep. Right here, we have wild, we have wild black, black raspberries. Black raspberries. Yep. So this one's probably ripe enough to eat, but I'm not going to eat it. Uh, yeah, they do. They are a thorny bush, so that's not so great. Hopefully, I don't it's, fall. Yeah, it's soft. You can see the root structure is kind of still in here. Um, but like, for instance, this tree here that's down. Even if I hooked onto this thing with my truck and tried to pull it out, right. I couldn't move it if I wanted to without a chainsaw. And then do you just leave this thing to be? Do you cut it off at the root and then drag it out and use it for another deadfall? What do you do with it? I'm not sure. But it's kind of this weird period where we don't own the property yet, but we're about ready to sign on the dotted line for this stuff. And so, but we are hopefully on the other side, we don't have any damage. This is where the brunt of the, the storm drainage will come through here and then it makes a bend and so it's slowed down somewhat by then. So we'll see how bad it is. We're just going to take you around here and show you the the clearing. We cleared that like I said with the weed whacker. But then back here there's some more damage. You can see that the trees are really stressed because all the leaves are kind of almost like curled. Yep. Keep walking. See this? Fun? Yeah. This is slipped down. Yep. Way down. It dragged the whole hillside down. Yep. Like that big tree there, that tree slipped down the hill. Which, honestly, if it keeps living, I don't care. That's cool because this will give us a natural progression down to the creek, which mm -hmm. is exactly what we wanted. Yep. I can only imagine how crazy it was last night. I was helping my brother. He had flooding in his basement. And then, of course, we didn't have any flooding. It was perfectly fine. See you guys, there's more berries over here. They're just all over the place. Everywhere. So Brian found some mulberries last weekend too when he was out here. At the front. But this is a brand new clearing. We've never seen this before because it hasn't existed until this morning. This is a new edge. This is the new edge. And look at that earthen dam that's about to happen. Yep. There's gonna be a little passage there. You see that tree slip down the hill that's going right overhead. Yep. And it's run into this other tree that's this also fell, slipped fell down, down the hill. over here. So my hope is that these trees will kind of stay together. This one's got a dead branch, but it's actually alive from what we can tell. And just to give you guys an idea of how deep or how far that is. Here, throw another stick. So that's the water down there, obviously. And if we just keep walking down this way, what we'll do is we'll actually eventually get to a point, like this here is a dead tree. That's been dead for some time. It just slid but down. But it's actually quite heavy. Yeah, that's a big tree. Yeah, it goes it's all like the way. It's that structure. It was actually pulled over, but look over here, hon. Yep. Look at that spot down there. You can see the roots. 
This one's been rotten for a while. Right down there, it's almost like a freaking beaver dam now. It almost like meets at a point here now. It slid. Both hills slid so much. Wow. He almost has can a almost cross. Okay, I don't want this whole thing to fall on me. That would suck. Holy but look, cow. this tree is actually a tree from the other side. Yep. That tree goes up to the other side. Wow. So I don't know if we're going to have to get back here with machetes and clear some stuff. You see this stone? This stone is in the middle. Okay? It's loose. This part wants to rip off. This tree would probably like nothing more than to fall to the other side. And it's completely conceivable that that can happen. Wow, this is so cool right here. Show the people this, honey. Can you bring down the camera if you take it down here? Yeah. So we've got all these trees tangled. This is so cool right here. Here, you're closer. Come out and go. Okay. Out. That is so pretty. Of course, hard to get scale here. Yeah. Sounds like a rushing river right now. And this here, that's so cool. And then it rolls around, around the corner. It goes all the way under. See, we haven't been able to see this. I wonder if I can stand on this log safely. Looks like I can. Yeah, it slipped. Okay. I think it's okay to go. I don't know if you guys can get a view down there. I'm trying to hold the camera up high enough to where you can see, but I don't think you can see through the foliage. But right there. You may not be able to see, but you can imagine what it'd be like if you could. <laughs> so, here, hon. Take this since you're up higher. Yep. Got it. So... This is kind of one of those things where it's like, even though it's not probably what we would plan, it's kind of cool. We just want to make sure that at the end of the day, this doesn't continue to erode to the point where it hits our house or the foundation for our house or any of our runways or outbuildings or whatever <laughs> we end up putting into this property. But uh, the other thing is this stormwater it's like record amounts of rainfall. I think we got 10 inches in three hours where we live. And then it came and did a second round that was uh, maybe a third of that. Probably, yeah, about. Which is still a lot for our area. So, I just want to give you a quick intro. We'll pick it up on the other side. Back, this is day six. And last night we had record rainfall in a short period of time. So there was some damage out at the property. You already saw the intro. The cool thing is this creek is just like everything I wish it was all the time. It's fast flowing, it babbles, and it's just really cool. But there's a trade off for that. And that is some of the trees, like this tree you can see here, that's the way the other trees are gonna look. It's fallen down all the way into the creek, and then it roots over here, believe it or not, next to our deadfall root. So basically, that's what we're going to end up with on the other side of the property now, is trees that actually start from the opposite bank. And eventually they'll erode to where they fall down like this, and then they'll grow up into the light. So it's going to be pretty cool if we can keep them alive. And when I say we, I mean Mother Nature. <laughs> we're not going to probably do a whole lot. Uh, but for today, we had one step that got screwed up because this tree shifted a little bit. Actually, this tree stayed steady. We lost our brace, which I can't believe we didn't lose the first day, because we've had storms between virtually every day, except for maybe like two and three. Um, this also broke free, which doesn't surprise me, because this little tree and that little tree were both moving free, uh, short of the small strap. And you'll notice that this rope, I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's a little bit higher and a little bit more play. And so when I get over here, What's happened is we had some erosion during this heavy rainfall. And so it eroded down, and then it also eroded down here, and it's exposed this root structure for that tree, a little bit of this tree, and then whatever else is over here. So luckily we built everything strong enough that it's held tight um, into rotten lumber. <laughs> 
But what we're going to do today is we have to work on getting some of our replacement boards taken care of. There's like a couple of screws that broke off, so we'll have to peel those out or cut them off. We're going to take those sticks out. They're gone for now. we got some new rope that's going to be sturdier. We're going to restrap those two lumbers or those two trees, just kind of get them cinched in a little bit better than they were. And then over here, we've got steps that we need to put in. And the steps are going to be... Basically, we're going to have to backfill here, because right now we're stepping down. That needs to be brought up, and it needs to be so it washes away from the root ball. And then we're going to step here, and then up to the other side. So, the steps are a little bit more severe than we planned on, but they're going to still do the trick. And I mean, it's just as beautiful as it's ever been down here. Um, but having one rope as opposed to three, like whatever we happen to have lying around, we think it's going to look better. It's going to function better. It's got a lot higher load limit on it. Um, but we're going to get started. We'll go ahead and go to time lapse for you guys. You don't have to listen to the ramble anymore. All right, guys, as you can see, I'm scratching my back because I've gotten like 475 bug bites already today. That's why I have this wonderful, very cool jacket on. So we're going to be digging some steps here. The steps, obviously over there, had eroded away to a large degree, and that's not to be surprised by. Or would you grab one of those, son? And we're going to show the people what oh. we're trying to do. Yeah. So the idea is this needs to keep, like, we don't want to spend hardly any money on this. But there's certain things that we're going to have to spend money on. So we bought these. These are basically um, uh, 10 by 24 inch. They're called railroad stepping stones, and they're rubber. Rubber. So basically, we're going to make a flat spot, and we're going to stick this down. The whole idea is I want to keep mud off of these steps. Because as this thing kind of becomes more nature-y and falls into the ground, <laughs> then we still need to be able to get to the steps. And believe me, even if this thing fell down over there, it's still better than going through water. So we still have steps. So this is what we're gonna use. We're gonna use, uh, I think we have 10 inch spikes, 10 inch uh, landscaping spikes are just giant nails. I think we got like 30 of them for 10 to 12 bucks. Yeah. So I think all in on this project, we're gonna be like about $150, which sounds like a lot of wasted money if you're watching at home and I know you're thinking it. Mm -hmm. But for practical purposes, we didn't have a way of crossing. So, it is what it is, and we're gonna return what we don't use, so no big deal there. These things were expensive. This will be the biggest investment in this whole project. And these things are made of rubber. They're not gonna deteriorate, and they'll wash the water away from the hill where we're cutting into the hill. So hypothetically, they won't wash down the hill, and if they do, I'll have to go find them. So that's what we're gonna do next. Um, I wanna make two steps here, probably. So my wife is gonna make sure that I stay in camera for this. And we're probably not gonna time lapse just because this is such a small project. And then when we get ready, we already fixed a couple of problems over there. So all I'm going to do is just basically cut some steps. It's just a spade shovel. Just want to keep this dirt off of my my steps, obviously. And I can tell there's a decent amount of ground cover, but why don't you show them how much the ground cover stopped that from happening? That was not helpful ground cover over here. It's all all down in the creek now. It might have slowed it down a little bit, but it obviously did not stop it. We definitely have more of a clearing here than we had last week. Yep, and we're actually a lot earlier in the day too. So you guys are seeing this with new eyes probably. True. Okay, so this is uh, 10, 10 by 24 like I said. So we're getting close. We're just gonna make it so we have a full footing to put down. This is kind of to help our kids out too. It's our kids. 
Because that's a big step for little feet. Yeah. And if you're thinking to yourself, self, are they really going to have their kids cross that? Yeah. <laughs> if we can get them to do it. One has. Our oldest is fine with it. Our uh, next oldest is maybe not so much fine with it. But and the other two aren't capable. The other two aren't capable yet, so. Okay, so I'm just packing it down. Again, guys, the name of the game is temporary, but it's got to hold up to some wear and tear. What happened last night, I mean, we've got houses in our neighborhood that flooded that are 12 years old and built by reputable builders. Things happen sometimes. Mother Nature usually wins. Okay, you see that? Mm -hmm. What do you think of that? Should I go a little bit deeper? Yeah. Cut probably. it in an angle? A little bit more. Okay. Not much. I know, not much, but I think I want to try to pack this stuff right there. Yeah. That works better than I thought, really. Well, and we got to do this on the other side, but it's quite a bit more. But uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of move. The, there's actually kind of um, grass structure in this. So I'm hoping that that will possibly continue to grow. I doubt it will, but it would be really cool if it did. But what I'm doing now is I'm just kind of making a, making a spot where I want the erosion to start going when it starts flowing down here. So hopefully it'll channel away from the step. And then I'll do the same thing here. Just if there's water, some of it's going to make it over the top and you're not going to stop that. But if you can give it a path on either side, it'll help to keep your improvements intact. So I gotta go a little bit deeper here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's just a regular spade shovel, guys. This is one of these tools we bought. Probably about the time we were first married, right? Mm, so. Probably. Yeah, I probably only bought the house we're gonna know. Oh yeah, that's true. We didn't do much yard work. At our mm -hmm. old house, we lived in a townhouse. In the same town where we live now. Okay, so we'll just do that. And then this one little step. Eh, it, looks, it looks okay. It's not great. Thank you for falling all over my step dirt. You dirt ball. Get out of here, you dirt ball. All right, cool. This melamine has amazingly held up great. Um, just losing the veneer on the edge. Okay, so guys, I think that's what we're doing there. What do you think, hon? I think that's good. It's close to like almost a code stair. <laughs> Minus the code. Yeah. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some stakes and we'll show you how we're gonna attach this. And I'm probably gonna pound on this a little bit with a hammer to flatten it out. And we'll give you guys a close up shot of that. You know, pause it for now. Yep, okay. Okay, so we got our hammer and we're just coming to the conclusion we are gonna need a second stair. Um, not real excited about it, but since we're gonna be moving more dirt, we'll go ahead and do that first. And it's probably gonna be about here, right? Yeah. Okay. So, now that that's sort of cut almost like a piece of sod, I try to peel it down. And I want to put some of this back down here as I move it, and I'm going to squish it in. Just to kind of have the difference in step differences there. Plus then this stuff might take root. I kind of doubt it, but if it does, that'll help a lot with erosion control. 
Plus you want the step to be nice and flat. We weren't sure if we were going to do these two steps like this. But like I said, this is for one of our younger girls. The steps are. So we'll see. It's probably just going to be for, for not. is what it's going to be for. Alright, so let's see if we got enough in here. Not quite enough. I would say we'll cut just a little bit more here, right? That way, yeah. The machete would work good for that. Huh? I don't know if you cut it over here, baby. Eat a bug. Yummy. Mm -hmm. What was it? Probably a mosquito. Hmm. Well, one less to bite me with. <laughs> Actually, since I put this coat on, it's been a lot better. It probably looks miserable on camera. It's actually not too bad. It's comfortable out today. I'm just working, so I'm sweating. Um, but yeah, the, the weather is probably nicer today in terms of temperature than it's been the whole time we've been interested in this property. Yeah. Well, that's not true. There's been some nice days, but we haven't been out here. Yeah. Okay, so we'll see how this looks. Okay, now shoot me another one. Okay, so there's a couple of different reasons we went with this color scheme. One, it looks El Natural, which we're kind of going for back here. And all I'm going to do is just make sure my corners are all seated where I want them. Make sure it's not going to erode immediately when you step on it. And it would be kind of nice to know that we're comfortable with the spot. I think we're pretty good with the spots. Are you comfortable with this? Yeah, it looks good. Okay, so we want to make sure that, that we have a channel here. When there is water, that it kind of wants to go to the edge and go over. And there's foliage here which will help keep the earth from eroding away hypothetically but then you've got a step here that's pretty wide that's wide enough for an adult so it'll be fine for a kid okay so this, these are these are the landscape uh, spikes these are common spikes 10 inch there were 30 pieces in a box and this is what they look like so we're just gonna drive these right through the rubber to stake these in place and I had thought we would do up at the top but now having been here in person I'm wondering if maybe on these ones since they're so close to the surface we do both in the, like in the middle okay like here and then here so I got a well that's like a five pound hat hammer guess we're gonna find out if this works or not mm -hmm. so far it's not feeling really promising here there, it, there goes. it goes. Give me a regular hammer, hon. Yep. I'll try that on the next one. Now that will keep that thing from slipping and sliding. And that's the whole idea is just giving, giving people traction or animals or lions, tigers, and bears. Oh, my. Oh, no. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Actually, that... That was easier to control. Not as much purchase for each hit. So now, that'll give it somewhere to step without taking out the hillside every time we need to get up and down. Now, on this one, I am gonna go at an angle like this. Take the second spike. Yeah, it's not gonna go any more than that. Same thing here.
Okay, there you have it guys. You want to get a closer look for these people all mm -hmm. done? I wear size 13 boots and I got plenty of room to get up comfortably. Once you give them a different they angle, nice. you could go over there and then show them what it looks like from over by the edge there maybe, or maybe even on the tree. Yeah, good? Tripod around. Yeah, so go okay, down. So I can step here, step here while running into the tree. And one thought we had was of course this little tree here is it really serving any purpose? We've trimmed it up high enough. It's pruned up high enough to work. So it's out of our way. But we might tie from there to our first tie point for the little kids. And then they can hold on to that as they go down this little stairway. The other alternative we have is we have tree spikes. Or what do you call those things? Like tree stakes. Tree stakes. Yep. And we can tree stake here, possibly here, and have two ropes. Because mostly the big thing is getting out. Once you're on there, it's really pretty, pretty easy to do. But we don't want to give them a reason to chicken out right at the beginning. <laughs> so that's what we intend to do over there. We'll have to see how this works. It's certainly not a free thing to do. So we're sort of a little bit reluctant to get too involved with these because they're fairly expensive. Um, and then there's always a possibility that this will wash out, which would suck. But it is what it is. So our next step is going to be to go out there and probably retension the straps. And then we're going to get the ropes redone. We got... Uh, couple different lengths of rope with different load bearing capabilities and we wanted to stay away from something that's super bright but we might end up with a white rope um, we wanted it to be visible enough when you're close but look natural so we got a black which was like a really heavy rope has like 500 pound bearing capacity and then uh, what was the other one we did white yeah and then we did one that was kind of like, like a, a camo but it yeah. has a whole lot less load bearing capacity and we liked it but we got enough to do two runs back and forth so it'll be basically two braided or tied together or something so the other thing is you can walk into this from whatever angle that's kind of cool mm -hmm. it doesn't give you near as much support as you'd think though that does, does not support you very good not when you're my way so the other thing is these spikes are going to work good out there when we're into the rotten uh lumber mm -hmm. so we're going to go ahead and probably take a board out that we pulled out earlier and we're going to get started back to the time lapse so Guys, so we just had a little 
delay and what we were going to do, we decided to drive some stakes on a couple of critical steps that are around that second tree. After I ratchet, ratcheted the tree back, it kind of pulled the tree in a little bit more than I remember it being, partly because the log that we're walking across is lower. So it's allowed the tree to pull over a little further, which makes for a little bit more precarious stepping around. So we just wanted to have assurance. And those 10 inch spikes are good. All right, here's our choices. Paula, Paula propylene, three eighths by 75 feet long. This floats, which is handy. Hold <laughs> on. Bless you. That was a natural sound. <laughs> this has a load bearing capacity of 200 and 44 pounds, okay? Which can be reduced by shock loads, uh, up to a third. I am more than that. Is it enough? Probably. Because you're not gonna be stopping yourself from a fall, you're gonna be slowing yourself down as you do fall. And furthermore, you're not gonna be falling quite as far as we were before. <laughs> okay, the next option was polyester 7 16 by 100. Um, this one has a load bearing uh, capability of 350 pounds. This is the one we're leaning toward. It's also fairly expensive because it's 100 feet. This is cheapest. It's only like eight or 10 bucks, something like that. So it's super cheap. We were talking about doubling this up, but it is camo. That's nice. It'll look natural. The white is more. The obnoxious. white's definitely not as good looking. Okay, now this is the big dogs. Polypropylene. This floats as well. Five eighths by 50. Smooth grade. And this one holds, where the heck is the holding thing? Keep going. This one holds 500 pounds. So that would do my sale and then somebody else at the same time. So we might use that, but this is only 50 feet and it's also the most expensive choice. Of course. Of course. So what we might do is just kind of start with the cheap one because that agrees with our project demands. And we'll see if it'll reach. And if it does, then we'll get the second one and we'll just mirror it. And that's what we'll have. And then we'll have hypothetically 244 pounds times two times two thirds for if you're falling to your death. <laughs> um, I don't know if screaming is going to change the strength of this rope, but three eighths by 75. So we'll see how this works. And uh, we're going to go to time lapse for this probably, right? Yeah, probably. So anyway, sorry about that. We were going to get this other ratchet strap tightened, but I think we'll come back to that shortly. I want to get these ropes up because all the ropes are really high now. Yeah. Now that the bridge base has fallen down another foot or so. Um, again, like I said, if that thing falls all the way into the water, I don't care. It's still better than having no steps um, because good luck getting steps to stay on the side of this hill. I bet these things are going to still wash out, even though I kind of like the idea. Um, so anyway, that's what we're going to do. Keep watching, guys. going again. So we're just tying a simple knots to make this thing work. Of course we're tangling and dangling everywhere.
Now with each of these steps, we're going to just put a little bit of pressure to take the slack out of this line. But I do want to fill on a certain side so that it's taut. When you grab it, you don't have to wonder where it's going to be. Okay. Well, it's a lot higher than it was. Hang on, I'm moving the tripod so we can see you maybe a little bit. Okay. Um, I don't know that it's so much lower than it was. I know. Yeah. Be careful. Okay, we can see you better now. Huh? We can see you better now. Okay. All right, so. Now this rope needs to go around here, and then we can eliminate the other rope right. when we're all done. It's been working kind of nice going around the trees. Yeah. It's kind of hard on the rope though, because the bark is rough. Yeah. Well, 75 feet was definitely enough. Yeah. So that's good to know. Yep. Yeah, it was definitely enough. And then some. This is almost enough to double up on the most precarious spot, hon. See how much I've got? Yeah. Look. I'm almost out to the corn. Right. I can definitely say that this string is a lot stretchier than the other ones. I think I'm gonna tie a knot here. Okay. this here but I haven't decided you know how much it stretches yeah that's a lot of stretch Megan as much as I like the idea of it being already there I don't know if this is good enough the tree is moving too I just don't know if that's enough strength huh do you think the other one is going to stretch less? I think that the white one or the black one would be sufficient. The black has the highest load limit. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, we can leave it here. I well, like the fact that it blends in nicely. I know. But it's just, it's so stretchy. The black is 50 feet. Can you do it? Like, do you have 25 feet extra? Um, maybe if we can do that that front little section because then we would only do it in one of the one of those yeah which would make it more cost effective it would be still pretty that's what the one. i know but the white one's 100 feet that's going to be like yeah we could like triple it up way we more than we need it almost no 33 feet i don't think would do it no okay so I have to figure out how I'm going to do this so I don't die. That's probably
probably be good. See, I'm telling you, the white string, way stronger. Because once you commit to that spot, you're committed to it, you know? Yeah. And I just don't feel like this brown is ever going to give you that level of security, you know, security that we want. Okay. much more secure out here now good that was a big move or that was a huge improvement so i guess why don't we pause it we'll get this one undone and we'll be back with the black rope okay all right folks we're gonna try this instead this is only 50 feet long it's got a 500 500 pound um load limit it's polypropylene the other stuff we had was just way too stretchy so plus this is black, so it should kind of like hide, which is what we want. We don't want this to look like anything. That's why we picked a nice white board for this. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna try this and give it a shot. I'm going. Yep. yep. So we got this bigger rope and uh, got my instructions from The Art of Manliness on YouTube. Check it out. We'll link to it below. It's about three and three minutes and 57 seconds into the top seven knots to know or something to this extent. And uh, this is going to be the, was it a double half hitch or? I don't, I don't remember what you said, sorry. I would watch the video except for filming it on the camera that I was watching the video on. Yep. We might have a, a not fine lesson in our homestead, homeschool stuff. Cool. When we start in the fall. I'm going to eat bread. Are you filming? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so look. Does that feel better? There's a little bit of slip, so I must have screwed up somewhere. It's strong, but I don't like that it slips at all. That means I did something not quite perfect. I think I know what I did wrong too. Okay. And a little bit more room. Yeah. Around. From the bottom. Back under. And then through. That's the way he did it. But he did snug this first. Which maybe I didn't do that. I thought I, thought I did. It's amazing the difference one little direction will make when tying a knot. This cable is so huge. That looks like. I don't think it's gonna go. That would hold me up. Okay. Okay. I am not gonna intertwine this with the tree. Yeah. I don't know that I am at all. Oh. Because then the kid can reach. See, That's true. I'm just wondering, like, it, can, it won't ever fall any lower than that. And I don't think it'll fall anywhere at all, period. See, 
then I can go straight. It should take up a little bit less. Okay. You're just through the, yep, there you go. There's the end. Do you, am I good over here? Oh, this rope is so much nicer. It's like night and day difference. So much better. We'll try to link to this rope, guys, because it's like a million times better than the other rope. And we're not rope people, you know? We don't know much about rope. We are not. This was the, poly, the polypropylene one. Yeah. I'm sure that this is not the normal operating procedure for this. <laughs> Meaning that I'm probably going to like wear out the rope a little bit more than I have to doing this. But I am on a bridge. Yeah. And I don't exactly have cat-like reflexes. No. Sorry. Okay, so. I don't know if I'm crazy about it being lower like that, though. Because right now I feel like I'm not going to be able to hold myself up as easy. Hmm. I'll have to think on that a little bit. I could probably pull some slack and then lift it. So when we're done, we're going to take off this old rope, guys. So, but I think you get the idea. We'll go ahead and stop the video for now as we work our way across. Because there's nothing exciting here. We'll show you when it's done. Okay. Okay, guys. We got the black rope stretched all the way across. All the way to the big tree. Let me move you over so you can see. The sun's coming through now. So we had enough with the 50 feet and there's one board over there that's really wobbly. So Brian's staking it with those big um, landscaping stakes or those 10 inch nails that we're using. So he's just pre-drilling so the boards don't split. And then we'll reevaluate our next step. Good. That's great. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yep, I gotta reposition my body so I can actually swing the hammer properly. Okay. having the two ropes actually <laughs> and to be honest see here's the thing this orange one is going to stop these uh trees from going farther unless it completely shears that's steel yeah i don't think it's gonna i don't think the tree is going to be as strong unless the tree is moving really fast and then it might snap my guess is it won't okay cool so the next thing we got to do is we got to dig in some steps there which means we might need to dig or move some wood from there to there. So probably machete time. Yeah, machete time, huh? Okay, are we just gonna keep filming? Uh, yeah. Other 
stubs that we cut down, we broke them into pieces and we actually made a bridge out of them here. We can stand on it. And then we're just putting in these tree stakes for handholds. Because this helps, but then you can grab onto this as you climb up the side of the hill. So we're just working those in. That's a pretty decent amount of sturdiness there, hon. Okay. So I would say we do a couple of those, like one here, and then one there. When this is all said and done, we'll wrap a string around there, and we'll find another point to tie off to, and we can bring it around so that you can have a, a guide on each hand. I kind of wish I could leave this out higher, but I feel like I've got plenty of support to make that decision there. I'm a little nervous it's going to want to come out of the dirt though. But see guys, this is just a bunch of branches and stuff. And we're just going to put a piece of lumber across here and brace it so it can't fall over. You coming? The mosquitoes are insane because she didn't put on an awesome lap coat. Come on, just tip it up and I'll grab it. Wrap your arm to it. Here. Oh, we also put, right at the end of that stake, we put uh, four more big, long metal spikes. So that's helping to shore everything together. That's perfect. Now this is going to get into the root structure of the tree. Hopefully this tree doesn't end up in a creek in a week. Okay, I'm going to try and zoom in on you a little bit because it's getting dark. You're, you're in the shade. Okay, so once we have those in, Han, we could do a railing off of that to this tree. How about that? Yeah. So we got to keep an eye open for a healthy tree that either needs to be cut down or a healthy tree that fell into the ravine. Well, we've got a few of those. Or we could tie another stake there. I prefer the three points of contact there. I think this last one, hon, I'll just put up top. So we got something to hang on to up here as well. Okay. Will you do the thing I taught you where you wrap your left arm through when you're around? Just make sure you don't do any commitments until you've got three points of contact there. You should have plenty of length. No, do both. If they're both there, use both. Then use the other arm. Okay, well you've got to slack, that's the problem. When you go to call, you're not gonna be able to you're not gonna be able to do much about it. Check my little beaver dam thing that I did in there, hon. Okay, shoot that up. Thank you. So is this good, do you think, here, hon? Or yeah. do you think it should be over here? Mm, no. Try, keep com try coming up. Careful when you step. See? See, that's muddy. But you've got two handles now. So right. just go up. i got to make another spot there, then. So then where are you going to want to reach? Well, probably there. Because then you I can guess. step over. Yeah. Okay. All right. Because think about when you're going back down to the bridge, you'll want something too. Plus, this isn't going to erode away quite as easy. Okay, so we'll get this down there. 
And then I'll get as many of these little pieces of tree that I missed. Okay. I must be hitting the root structure, hon. Probably. Dang it, I'll have to move to a different spot then. I'll be right back. Are you going to pause that or keep it going? I'll just keep it going. Okay. If I had a pole driver, this would be a lot easier. It's just high enough, I can't quite get the right action. My arm's getting tired. I keep hitting the roots. I'm going to have to move this to a different spot. go as well. Basically all I did right there guys, I just filled it in with a ton of little pieces of wood. Some stronger than others, some of them were like this. I just took them, ran them down like this so they were together, and then pulled them over and just kept holding them until I had kind of like a, a little bundle of sticks. And then those, I stacked up just like a beaver would. And I gotta get all these pulled in there. But I keep hitting roots. We'll pause it and come back when I find the spot for it. All right, folks. So as you can see, we've kind of uh, started to build up here, right there. And what we're dealing with now is just building up even more. And you can see we started building what looks like a handrail over here. And so we're gonna keep working on that for a minute. I gotta work my way across. And we got um, a couple of the steps that are right about here are loose. So I'm gonna drill holes and do some stakes. The moment has finally come for this day to end. Thank God. <laughs> okay, so. As you can see, the beautiful sunset is about to start in about an hour and a half of sunset coming. You can see right here, we did two steps, which I will demonstrate. Step one, step two, onto the walkway. 500 pound rope. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that yet, but basically, took off the twine and we use that down here, I'll show you. Tighten up that strap, this strap we left, the rest of the strap. We maintain the steel and the 500 pound line so these trees will hopefully stay about where they are. So I'd say between the two we have 
I don't know, maybe 750 to 1,000 pounds of holding strength at one point. So pretty high PSI. You can go this way or you can go this way. And we added stakes in these ones that are 10 inches long. Very good, very sturdy connection now. So as you can see, got quite a bit of water tonight. So coming down, this is what we were filling in guys, right here. This is just, I'm going to wait for my camera woman to get around. Hold on. You want to go around the top like I was doing? No, I'm too short. Alright. You good? Just Go. Yeah, I'm right. good. Okay, continue. So then we, we built this little spot so you can walk on any of this spot. And this was basically a foot lower, okay? So that leads us to our little homemade railing with three levels and three stakes. You can hang on to this wood. Come up. And then on the way back down, you can ascend like this or like this. The latter of which is a little bit more freaky. But it works good either way. So why don't you come on down camera crew and you can hand me the camera if you want. So as you see we got two ropes here too. And uh, Here. Redundancy is good. Uh, thank you. We did not get we did not get our steps totally done here. Nope. This took forever. Yes, it did. Forever. But look at this sweet view, guys. That is so cool. Look at that. Let's go show them the not me, the corn. Okay. We also found a passage. We cleared out a little bit here. I want you to show them. I'll show them my path down. Okay. Okay, so these trees have a Exposed root system. And it's amazingly sturdy. I have a little natural ladder. And that gets you down here. And then from here, we hope to get down to the beach. But we don't have our mud boots on yet, so we're going to hold back on that right now. This side of the creek is a lot less steep than oh, steep. this side over yeah, here where it's just a here. giant hill. You ready? Yep. Got it. So there's Megan. We got a little ladder bridge. And then what I'm walking on is just a bit of a hillside. There's another hill, and you can see, whoops, slipped. You can see this is closer now, because like from this me median point here, you're about 10 feet from here to here, maybe a little bit more. And there's a lot of water right now, which is cool, cool, cool. Love it. We got lots of erosion. With the storms but how sweet is this that's so cool and you see how much of a steep drop there is so like i've been saying all along even if this thing falls it's going to fall down hopefully it'll stay vertical and we'll just have a ladder and i'll let you guys guess about this look at that just waiting to see what lives in there okay you ready i'm not Okay, camera woman, grab that. Thank you. Let's go show them the Good. corn. Yep. Yep, we're going to show them the corn. The corn is uh, more than knee high by the 4th of July. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah more than knee it's, high. Are you kidding me? That's what they always say. More than knee high? No, they say it should be knee high by the 4th of July. Here, let's <laughs> see how tall Brian's knees are. Yeah, I'd say we're surpassing the knee high part. So remember when we were here last week? Wow, that's crazy. I'm six foot tall. It's yeah. Six and a half, seven feet, something like yep. that. Remember the edge of the corn corn cornfield 
is going to be the least productive part. Last week you could still see the trees on the other side of our property line. This week you can't, you can see that tree that's out on, on the road. And that's not on our property. That's not over the road. That's it. So guys, that's it. Let's uh, give them a view back on the way through. Look how sweet that is. Super looks. pretty. Someday, wouldn't that be sweet if we had a, like a deck? A little gazebo out here. A gazebo with like... Deep, covered in deep. Careful of that. I know. Hey, that's a good... That's a good mud cleaner. Yes, yes it is. Jeez. That's why my toes are clean, because I've picked it 14 times. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, cool. Super awesome. Oh, you missed those one time. Oh, man. Dang it. See, here's their little clearing. There's another one we could use. Super cool. Everything is just covered in mosquitoes, but it's cool. It's cool in here. Yeah. You hear all the birds? And the water. It's so cool. It's awesome. This is just so cool. And it's just one little spot, guys. I can't stress that enough. Although, geez, look at that deadfall. Yeah, I saw that. It's like perfectly too. level. All right, so on the way back over, guys, you get to watch us hopefully not fall. So you can brace yourself here, hun, if you want. Yeah. But then it's a little bit harder to get your leg over. I know. You can also just do this and straddle the rope. Okay. Easy peasy. With the camera. Remember, there's two wood blocks that are kind of loosey here. Yeah, no. Guys, we'll do something else here. I don't know if we'll put a another piece of high quality melamine. Just sit on the rope. <laughs> Just sit on the rope. Oh, I'm sorry, Why? You're gonna erode that wall away. Okay, go. Okay, so I'll go. I'll do it differently when I'm not filming. So you throw this way easy, hon. Look great. See, this is the tree that he was talking about earlier. That there is the base of it, and it goes all the way up across. It's still alive, but it's growing out the side of the hill over here. All right, I'm going out of the mosquito-infested land. Hey. Yep. Don't scare them off. Don't scare them off. Oh wait, we didn't. Yet. We didn't invite them yet. So. Guys, in closing, come on out. I want to see these steps. In closing for day six, so we ran out of time lapse. Things go a lot slower without time lapse. Maybe I'll time lapse it myself. But one way or another, this thing is coming along. I really had hoped to get that done, but we had some damage today that we had to remedy. And I think, uh, I think we did a decent job. I hope you enjoy the intro with the giant Niagara Falls. <laughs> and uh, we'll try to link to those uh, rubber steps and the stakes. Yep. So thanks for watching. Check the description below. We'll have the links for you there for the machete and the different things that we use for this project. It really helps us to uh, support the, ch the channel financially if you buy from those links. And uh, we appreciate you watching. Mostly we just want you to come back and watch like 100 times each. <laughs> All right, you know where to find more. Day seven, coming soon.